Hello everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So I am here back for my first currently inked of 2024. So this is in my A5 Galen Leather Everyday Leather Notebook that has 400 pages of GS... Wait. <laughs> 400 pages of 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. And this is what I will be swatching on. Now, what I also have with me is... I'm. What is it I'm going to be using today? I'm going to be using these pipettes, which I got off Amazon. I'll be doing some swirls with my ink sample vial. And I'm just trying to think what else is there. If there's anything else that comes up here. Oh, uh, I also have, it's kind of off screen, this ink sample vial holder. Whoa. This is from Fountain Pendulum, and I will link her profile in the description below. Let's get started. The first ink and pen combination is my Sailor Yorimeko Kitsune Biori, and it is actually in my Pelican M800 in the brown black. Now this pen has a fine 18 karat nib here, but it also has been ground to a fine cursive smooth italic by Jack Hernandez. So I am in love with that pen. So what I'm going to do with my cur currently inks, what I like to do is take a small drop of ink, just like so, just so I can see the ink swatch, and then swirl it around. Because it's great to get, obviously, the what the ink looks like in a writing sample, but I also love seeing it in a bigger swatch like this. So then, this is currently the pen that's actually in my five-year journal. So this is the Pelican, oh my gosh, M800 in the brown black. And it has a fine cursive smooth italic. And it currently has Sailor Yurameku. Ooh, Kitsune Biori. And this actually flows so wet out of this pen. And I love the Cursive Smooth Italic. It's so smooth yet slicey. I love that. So do my little leaf here in the corner. And I've already been using it. And I feel like almost this fine nib is almost now too broad for my writing. Or maybe it's just the combination of the two that are really wet. So that is the first pen inked up for January. My Pelican M800 with Sailor Yurimeko Kitsune Biori. The second pen and ink combination for January is Robert Oster Melbourne Pen Show 2022 exclusive. It's Melbourne Rose. And this one was sent to me by Jane of JP Pen and Ink. And it is currently in my, oh gosh in my Just Turnings Pastel Primary Manipulation. And I just realized these are both from Australia. So that is actually a good pairing there. And this is actually what I love about my Pastel Primary Manipulation pen. All of these colors I can put in this pen. So tiny drop, Oop, maybe a little bit more than that. Tiny drops, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And now that I am in my A5 versus a B6, I can certainly fit in nine <laughs> pens inked for the month. Do I find nine pens inked a bit too much? I think actually it's a good number for me. So just turnings. And you'll notice there's something different about this nib. Uh, pastel primary manipulation and this I don't know if you can see that in here it has a extra fine nib that has been ground into an architect now excuse me there will some be some people who don't notice a oh not a CSI the F arc who don't notice a huge variation in this but with my writing it is just the perfect amount so robert oster and i'm just going to write melbourne rose 
Oh, I love this because I'll show you the line variation here. So down it is super extra fine and then horizontal, oh, gosh. I mean, you don't notice it a lot unless you have teeny tiny writing like me and I love it. It's smooth and again, slicey done by, I say local Nibmeister, Jack Hernandez, but he's about a three hour drive away. So that is my Just Turnings Pastel Primary Manipulation with the Extra Fine Architect Nib with Robert Oster, Melbourne, oh, blurry, sorry guys. Melbourne Rose. The next ink is actually one from Katie. She had sent this to me in our little pen ink swap a couple of months ago, and this was her own creation. It's a Birmingham Pen Co. Custom called Toasty Firewood, and it's got a little bit of shimmer in this as well. And I have it in my Le Bon Taroko Pinnacle Pen, which I think is a very, very good match. Now, Katie did say that this ink should go in a pen that is easy to clean out. I'm not really too scared about pens being too difficult to clean out. Anything with a cartridge converter, I think is generally easy to clean out. So, plus I also got a new, and you can tell you're an adult when you're excited about a uh, an ultrasonic cleaner. <laughs> I got one for Christmas. It was on my Christmas list. So I think anything that is really difficult to clean will be helped by that. So this is my Le Bon Taroko and Pinnacle. And this actually has a Bach, what is this? A fine nib. And it has BPC Custom Toasty Firewood. When Katie made this for me, I just said, make me a brown. I didn't really give her any guidance, <laughs> so sorry about that. But I wanted to give you as much freedom to create a brown. And so far, it's been working really well. And I'm looking forward to being able to journal with this. I feel like it's more of a fall color, but I don't really ever want to limit myself to using just certain colors and certain seasons because I just want to have fun with all the pens and inks. So that is Le Bon Taroko Pinnacle. Did I say Taboko? No, it's Taroko with the Birmingham Pen Co. Custom Toasty Firewood. The next one is a new ink that I don't think I've shown on this channel other than in my big ink swatching video. It's a Diamine Keppa Doccia and it's a Galen Leather exclusive and you can see all that shimmer that is in there. Absolutely gorgeous and it's currently in my Esterbrook SD Rainforest. Now this one was also recently ground by Jack Hernandez into a fine cursive smooth italic which I love. The only grind that I have left or that I'm wanting to really get, well, there's actually a couple, but to round out my fines and extra fines, I really want an extra fine cursive smooth italic. Now, I did ask Jack about that and he said that you might not see a lot of line variation, but for me, with my small writing, I think it would be perfect. So this ink is this gorgeous deep green that has a tiny bit of sheen as well as some shimmer. And in this pen, it is wonderful. So we have my Esterbrook SD. You can already tell there's some line variation there. Rainforest in the fine CSI. And this is Diamine Cappadocia. Gorgeous. You can see that line variation there. So down strokes are broad, cross strokes are narrow. And the way that Jack has done this for me, it's so smooth. But again, there's that element of the sliciness of the cursive italic. It's a little sharper than a stub nib. 
So that is my Esterbrook SD Rainforest with Diamine Cappadocia. The next ink is Robert Oster Pulp Addiction and it's Blue Addiction. This was also sent to me by Jane of JP Pen and Ink and I have put it in my Zodiac Pen Co. Caroline, Carolina Agate and this is from, well, what model is this? The Sagittarius model. But I'm just looking at this. It reminds me, or like the imagery of this pen and the resin of this pen reminds me of waves crashing onto a cliff. And I really love that. So before I do that, I'm going to take a small pipette of this. Tiny drop, I don't need a ton to make my little swirl. Just a teeny tiny drop. And then swirl it around with the sample ink vial. And I do this very gently so that you're not taking the fibers of the paper off with you. Oh gosh, isn't that such a gorgeous, gorgeous blue? So this is in my Zodiac Pen Co. This is the Sagittarius model. And it's in the Carolina Agate. And this has a fine nib. And the ink is Robert Oster with Pulp Addiction. And it's called Blue Addiction. I really like that kind of dark teal. Pretty. And this nib, I mean, it's a fine Yovo nib and I am a big fan of Yovo nibs. I think they're great, reliable mostly consistent and I feel good about being able to grind these because I can switch them among so many different pens. So that is Zodiac Pen Co. Sagittarius in the Carolina Agate and that has Robert Oster Pulp Addiction Blue Addiction and you can already see there's some sheen there. I'll do close-ups of all of these ink swatches once they're all dry. The next ink I'm using is Birmingham Pen Co. Molten Tin, and it is going, or it is in my newest pen. This is from Pens by Casey, all the way from Australia, and this is the Tokubetsu 13 model, which has Kyocera. Gosh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it is because I had pronounced all of the parts of this pen wrong <laughs> from the other day. So, hold on. The it is the Tokubetsu 13 with inlay with Nico Ebonite, and it is the, the Tiffany Casein. I kept saying Casein, which is so wrong. It's Tiffany Casein, so I apologize for that. And it is the Kyocera, so it's not Kyocera, it's Kyo, like Tokyo, Kyocera Opal inlay with a, a gloss finish. But oh my goodness, so that is the Tiffany Casein with the Kyocera Opal inlay beautiful and that has the uh, Birmingham Pen Co. Molten Tint. Gosh, I got so ahead of myself with the pen that I didn't even do my little ink swatch. I, I had re-watched the video uh, once it had already been published and realized that I had been saying casein wrong this whole time and I am so sorry about that. But good learning lesson. I like to make sure I do want to make sure that I am pronouncing things as best as I can, as properly as I can. And this Birmingham Pen Co. Molten Tin, I thought was a beautiful, beautiful match. And this, I feel like it should have gone down later on in the currently inked, but this one is, uh, it goes down purple, but then it dries this beautiful gray. Pens by Casey, and it's the Tokubetsu 13. I'm not going to write the whole thing here, but this is a cypress nib. So the cypress nibs have the same collar uh, as the Yovo nibs. So you can actually change this out with any pen that holds Yovo nibs. And so far, this is beautiful. So I'm going to write fine cypress here. 
very wet and smooth writer. So Birmingham Pen Co. And I feel like in this pen, I can put almost any ink because of all the colors of the Tiffany casein, as well as the inlay, Molten Tin. And so far, really enjoying this fine Cypress nib. If you ever get a chance to try it, I highly, highly recommend it. I think they only come in fine, medium, and broad. I would love to try an extra fine because I think that would be the perfect width and wetness for me. So that is the Pens by Casey Tokugetsu 13 model with Birmingham Penco Molten Tin. The next pen is also a new acquisition. I purchased this on Black Friday in November from Stilo A Stile. This is the Leonardo Memento Zero in the Andromeda model, and I got this in the Rhodium finish rather than Ruthenium. And I got number 80 of 260. I wasn't ex well, no. I hadn't planned on purchasing this one. The Violette I was definitely going to purchase. This one I just put in my cart because I thought if I'm if I don't get the Violette, at least if I can get the Andromeda, I'll be happy. And what that is inked with currently is Herbon Poussière de Lune. Oh my gosh, my daughter will get so mad at me if I get that one wrong. My daughter uh, goes to a French immersion. Oops, sorry, French immersion school, and her French pronunciation and everything is wonderful and she tells me well compared to me comparing me and my husband I have better pronunciation than my husband does uh, but yeah I'm getting some validation for my daughter about French so her bon poussière de lune oh I love that purple and I also love the size of that particular Herbon bottle, this really cute 10 milliliter bottle. I still count it as a bottle because it's glass. Uh, some people count it as a sample. But. Uh, okay, so this is the Leonardo and Stilo, a Stile, whoops, in the Andromeda. And this has an extra fine Yovo nib. And it currently has Herbon Poussière de Lune, which I think is a perfect match. I am so far enjoying this combination. And even the extra fine nib actually is not too dry at all. Really, really lovely. Oh my goodness. So pretty. I mean, look at that. Look at the combination of the two. All right, so that is my Leonardo Andromeda. Oh, I've, I've, I even forgot to write Memento Zero, but it's the Memento Zero in the Andromeda with an extra fine nib with her Bon Poussière de Lune. Next, we have another custom mix from Katie. This is Iris, and I have it in my Zodiac Pen Co. This is the Virgo model in the Brooks Abalone, and can we just admire this? I'm loving, loving the Abalone, one of my favorite, favorite blanks from Jonathan Brooks. And the thing about those blanks is that they can be so different from one batch to another, but even within the same batch, they can be so, so different from one pen to another. I think one of the things that I want to do this year actually is, oh, there goes Lucy. <laughs> In terms of resin pens, I think I am all for resin pens, but I do want them to have a clip or some sort of metal detailing just to be able to add a little bit more dimension to the pen. So this is, oh, this is my second Zodiac Pen Co. in here, so Zodiac. Pen Co. and this is in the Virgo in the abalone and this has an extra fine nib and this has a Birmingham Pen Co. custom mix from Katie and it is Iris. It's funny I showed this to Katie uh, over Instagram uh, message her the other day and she was like oh I like that 
and then she remembered she had actually made it. So <laughs> it's a good thing you like what you make, Katie, because this is really pretty. And so far, the ink is flowing quite well out of this extra fine nib. But just look at the different properties that are showing up there. Really lovely, and I think it is the perfect match. So that's Birmingham Pen Co custom mix from Katie called Iris in my Zodiac Penco Virgo model in the abalone. Last but not least, we have Diamine Earl Grey, and that is in my Parker, I think it's called the Slim Fold or the Parker VS, and this was given to me by my Secret Santa, and it has a 14 karat I believe it's a fine nib, but it has like, the words Canada on there. I don't know if you can see it. it has Canada 1955 on there. So this is a vintage pen and my Secret Santa did recommend that I use inks like Diamine or Herbon or Waterman, really the safer inks in this. So I'm not going to put inks like Sailor or Wearing Ghoul or anything like that into this pen. This one will stay with the safer inks and I'm not the expert in terms of what inks would be the safest ones to put in here but I know Diamine and Herbon are two of the safer ones and I'm not the expert either on what makes an ink safer versus another so if you have that knowledge please let me know down in the comments below because I would love to know more about that I believe it has something to do with the pH level but that is just from my very, very basic preliminary research. And if you're not familiar with this pen, I'll leave a link to the video about this, but it's got the blind cap up here and then kind of a push filler, uh, a button filler for the sack that's inside. So this is my Parker VS or Slim Fold. And it has the 14 karat, I believe it's a fine nib. I'm trying to find where it says here, but I believe it is a fine nib. And I have Diamine Earl Grey. And watch this. Oh, so lovely. Like it doesn't take a lot to be able to push that it's so smooth even doing that gorgeous and it feels like it's got a little bit of an architect edge to it too really really fun so far to use so at least if i can use diamine inks in here diamine have a huge selection so i'll be able to i won't be putting shimmer inks into this for sure but at least diamine inks have a huge selection that i can try out different inks in this one so that is my Parker VS or Parker Slim Fold with Diamine Earl Grey. So there are all my pen and ink combinations for January 2024. You'll notice I have another piece of paper here. This is actually endless regalia paper. This was sent to me by, by Bless Kid Canada and it comes on a pad like this and I've been very interested to try this ever since I've seen this on Carrie's channel Pens and Tea. So I thought, you know, this year maybe try and compare the Tamoy River paper to different papers throughout the year and see how I get on with that. And already you can see there is a difference between the different inks here. So for example, I mean, the two here, there's more of a chromo shading happening in the Tamoy River paper versus the Endless paper. Not a huge, huge difference between the Endless and, the, sorry, the Regalia paper and the Tamoy River paper with the Robert Oster Mulborn Rose. There's a little bit more shimmer coming out in the custom Toasty Firewood mix. I don't see any shimmer in the swatch, but it looks more teal in the swatch versus green on the Tamoy River paper. But the writing sample, if I look at just the writing sample, the writing sample seems to pick up more of the shimmer on the Tamoy River paper versus the Endless. So it'll be interesting to compare the two. And then we have here, we have Robert Oster Pulp Addiction, Blue Addiction. Looks like the sheen is showing up more in the Tamoy River paper than it is on the Endless. I'm trying to 
angle that properly here. And then the Birmingham Penco Molten Tin, it actually looks like it feathered a bit on the Endless Regalia paper. The Tamoy River paper, it did not feather, but it looks as if it's more purple on this paper than it is on this paper. This looks like it's more blue gray. This looks more purple gray. And then for the Poussiere de Lune, I can see a little bit more of what could be sheen here, whereas I don't really see that pooling as much on the Regalia paper. And then there's a huge difference on this one, actually, the Birmingham Penco, the custom mix from Katie, the Iris. There is more of that chromo shading happening on the Tamoy River paper, and it looks a little bit more flat on the Endless Regalia paper. And then looking at Diamine Earl Grey on the Regalia paper versus the Tamoy River paper, on the Regalia paper, it looks more like a bluer gray versus this looks more as if it has pink and brown undertones, which is so, so interesting. So I'm really glad that I did the swatch on the Regalia paper. Regalia paper is not one that I will probably use on a day-to-day -day basis, but I like seeing the different comparison. One thing to include as well is that the endless paper does seem to bleed through actually quite a bit, especially in those swatches versus the Tamoy River paper. It doesn't seem, you've got the shadow for sure, but you don't get the bleed through. And even in the writing sample, you do get a little bit of that bleed through as well on this paper. So that is my currently inked for January. Let me know down below what you're inking or what you think is gonna be my favorite this month. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions, again, please leave them down below. Thank you again for watching and have yourselves a great day.